In this video, we'll talk about complications of a heart attack. Heart failure doesn't necessarily mean that your heart has stopped beating or working. It's a condition when someone's heart is unable to pump enough blood around their body to meet all their bodily needs. Heart failure can cause many complications to all the body organs and parts because when the heart fails, they are starved of the oxygen-rich blood they need to survive. Areas such as the brain, lungs, kidneys, skin, and nervous system can be affected. The veins in the arms and hands, legs and feet, abdomen and neck can also be affected, often become swollen. Heart failure can cause shortness of breath, especially when doing physical work. With the amount of the loss or shortness of breath increasing with the level of exertion undertaken. Valvular heart disease. This condition is where the valves in your heart that control the free flow of blood are not working properly. The valves of the heart ensure that your blood freely flows in a forward direction and cannot leak backward. The way in which the healthy heart operates is the same for everyone. The heart contains four chambers, with the heart valves placed at the exit of each chamber. Your blood flows from both your right and left atria into the ventricles through the open mitral and tricuspid valves. When your ventricle chambers are full, the valves shut, stopping blood returning to the atria when the ventricles contract. When the ventricles start to contract, the aortic and pulmonic valves are forced to open. The valve from the left ventricle goes into the aorta and then to the rest of the body after passing through the aortic valve. The blood from the right ventricle goes into the pulmonary artery through the pulmonic valve. Once the ventricles have finished contracting and start to relax, both the valves shut, preventing any blood from flowing back. This pattern is continually repeated over and over for the full life of the person. There are two main types of heart valve disease. One, valvular stenosis, and two, valvular insufficiency. Valvular stenosis occurs when one or more valves are narrowed, stiffened, thickened, or blocked. This can lead to the heart having to work very hard to pump enough blood through to the different body parts. All four of the heart valves can develop stenosis. The other common type is valvular insufficiency, sometimes called either regurgitation, incompetence, or leaky valve. This happens when the heart valve does not seal or close properly, allowing some blood to be forced or leak back into the chamber. If this condition worsens, it forces the heart to work harder to supply the needed blood to the body. Some forms of heart valve disease are congenital, while others may only be detected later in infancy. Other forms can develop during a person's lifetime. However, the cause is still unknown, but it's definitely linked to inadequate diets and sedentary lifestyles. This form of the condition usually affects pulmonic or aortic valves. Sometimes they can have defective leaflets that are deformed, uh, they're an incorrect size, or not attached properly. Sometimes people are born with bicuspid aortic valve disease. This is where there are only two leaflets instead of the normal three, often causing the valve not to open or close properly or tightly. Acquired valve disease occurs when the valves that were normal at birth and in early life have changed or developed complications. This can occur from a variety of reasons, mainly infections or diseases, including rheumatic fever, caused by an untreated bacterial infection such as strep throat. Often, this type of infection in childhood, if left untreated, can quickly lead to inflammation of the heart valves. Often, the symptoms of this type of infection and irritation do not manifest for 20 to 40 years later. Another heart valve disease is known as endocarditis. This occurs when harmful bacteria enters the bloodstream and then attacks the heart valves. It can result in holes and growths developing, as well as subsequent scarring. This bacterium is often able to enter the bloodstream because of IV drug use, dental procedures, surgery, or severe infections. A very common condition is called mitral valve prolapse. This is a condition that is known to affect about 1.5% of the general population. 
This condition causes the leaflets of the mitral valve to move back into the left atrium when the heart contracts. It also often tends to make the tissues that make up the valve stretchy, causing the valve to leak. Normally, this condition does not become problematic and does not require treatment unless there are other complications. Another thing that can affect the heart valves are some sexually transmitted diseases such as syphilis. High blood pressure can also contribute, as can many types of drugs, both prescribed and over-the-counter and illicit. Cardiogenic shock is a condition in which your heart suddenly can't pump enough blood to meet your body's needs. The condition is most often caused by a severe heart attack. Cardiogenic shock is rare, but it's often fatal if not treated immediately. Fortunately, about 50% of people who develop this condition will survive if immediate help is available. The most common cause of cardiogenic shock is damage to the heart muscle from a severe heart attack. Only about 7 to 8% of people who have a heart attack will have cardiogenic shock. When people die from heart attacks, it's usually due to the cardiogenic shock, not the actual heart attack. Because of this shock, the body has a very low blood pressure. Another type of shock, hypovolemic shock, is where the heart cannot pump enough blood because of blood loss, usually from trauma. Vasodilatory shock is when the blood vessels relax abruptly, causing blood pressure to become so low that there's not enough pressure to pump the blood to areas that need it. This can be caused by a bacterial infection in the bloodstream or a severe allergic reaction to certain substances. This can also occur when the nervous system is damaged. When someone is suffering from this type of shock, regardless of the cause, it means not enough oxygen is reaching their vital organs. They only have a few minutes before the lack of oxygen starts to do damage that is usually not repairable. If it's not treated quickly, it's likely to cause permanent organ damage or death. If you know or think a person is in shock, call an ambulance so they can get treatment quickly. Do not delay with calling for help or try to transport them yourself unless there is no other option. A blockage in the pulmonary arteries of your lungs is called a pulmonary embolism. Usually a pulmonary embolism is caused when blood clots from the legs and sometimes other areas of the body, deep vein thrombosis, travel to the lungs. A pulmonary embolism can reduce or block the blood flow to the lungs, becoming a life-threatening condition. With prompt and expert treatment, the chance of this condition resulting in death are greatly reduced. One of the best ways to prevent a pulmonary embolism is to take adequate measures to prevent blood clots in your legs. If blood clots are formed, quickly eradicate them. Arrhythmia is the term given to a condition where the rhythm of your heartbeat changes. This can happen when your heart rhythm is too slow, too fast, or if it has an irregular rhythm. Sometimes an arrhythmia can cause your heart to just stop beating, which is called sudden cardiac arrest, or SCA. If it's not treated immediately, it can cause a loss of consciousness and death. Broken Heart Syndrome This condition is named because it can happen to someone who has no history of heart disease and tends to happen quickly. The most common signs of this are chest pains and shortness of breath. Sometimes it's accompanied by a cardiogenic shock or arrhythmias. The other symptoms of broken heart syndrome tend to differ from those of a heart attack. The symptoms occur abruptly after experiencing extreme physical or emotional stress. The results of an electrocardiogram, or ECG, which is a test to observe the heart's electrical activities, are usually different from those who have had a heart attack. For instance, those who have had a heart attack in the past will show a deep Q wave in their ECG graph. When tested, there are no signs of coronary arteries being blocked. There is usually unusual movement and possible ballooning of the left ventricle or lower left chamber of the heart. Usually, the recovery time is relatively quick, often within a few days or weeks as opposed to a heart attack, which usually takes a month or more. Arteries often harden as a person ages, losing their suppleness and elasticity over time. Although smoking is thought to be one of the major contributors of this condition, the exact cause remains unknown. Chemically derived drugs are believed to be another contributor, along with a poor diet, 
or a diet that contains a large amount of preservatives, artificial flavors, and colorings. Myocardial aneurysm. An aneurysm occurs when a blood vessel has been weakened, causing it to swell and fill with blood. Often these are formed after a heart attack. They often occur around the base of your septum or in the aorta. This can cause a constriction of the blood flow to the body, resulting in heart disease. Aneurysms become lined with scar tissue, which usually stops them from rupturing. Ventricular aneurysms generally grow slowly. The common symptoms are tiredness, lack of energy, and stamina. Blood clots can form inside some ventricular aneurysms, which can lead to serious complications and even death, especially when the blood clots break away and spread throughout the bloodstream. Some aneurysms are congenital while others are caused by a heart attack. The blood clots formed around them can block the blood vessels, resulting in restricted movement and tissue death in a limb, a stroke, ventricular aneurysm, or arrhythmia.